Elephants are unusual creatures, really, to, to use in battle. They don't like the atmosphere of the battlefield. They don't like the screams. They don't like the smell and the sound of death. And quite often, these creatures would turn tail and, of course, actually storm straight through their own ranks rather than the enemy ranks, causing absolute chaos. Military commanders soon began to deploy many kinds of anti-elephant devices that targeted the animal's vulnerabilities. One particularly ingenious way the ancients came up with of panicking elephants was to coat pigs in tar and set fire to them. Elephants, unsurprisingly, get very frightened by self-barbecuing pigs heading their way. These poor, kind of flaming, poor kind creatures would charge towards the elephants and send them off in a crazy stampede. But 1,000 years after Alexander's incursion into the Punjab, India was still the center of ancient tank technology. The Mughal Emperor Akbar, in his campaign to extend into Gujarat in northern India, was faced with the same problem as Alexander. But now the world had gunpowder. There's a battle between the Mughals and the army of Gujarat. Uh, the Mughals have, have quite a small army and they're using a lot of missile weapons, artillery and rockets. And the Gujaratis are relying more on older technologies, the elephant in particular. During Akbar's campaigns, countless rockets were launched by hand or mounted in wooden frames and set off. The weapons system was even said to target elephants specifically by skimming the rockets just above the ground. In this battle, a rocket hits one of the elephants and the inevitable happens. He stampedes, the other elephants stampede. A very large Gujarati army is defeated by a much smaller Mughal army using firepower and knocking out their primary weapon system. And this is the battle where the elephant really ends his reign on the battlefield. The weapon that ended two millennia of the elephant's dominion over the battlefield was not much bigger than a large mouse. Rocket experts Ben Jarvis and Paul Birch are investigating how such a weapons system could have been deployed by Akbar's rocket artillery units. From as early as the 13th century, uh, rockets were being used uh, by the military. Um, it wasn't until the sort of 17th or 18th century that they had much more of a defined use. Rockets were, were generally used on the battlefield mainly as a psychological weapon and um, were used for sort of scaring horses, uh, camels and uh, elephants. The text describes the rockets as being eight inches long and one and a half to three inches in diameter. The canister of propellant was sealed at one end and strapped to a shaft of bamboo about four feet long. This is basically a replica that we've uh, built of, of one of the 17th century rockets. Um, the casing here would have been made of iron and it's bound onto a bamboo cane with this leather thong. The Indians uh, were using uh, iron cased rockets probably before pretty much anyone else was. Um, it has a lot of advantages over bamboo cases for example which the Chinese use in that it's able to contain the, the explosive power of the gunpowder much much better um, so they could have packed more in um, and got higher pressure and therefore higher performance out of the rocket. Ben and Paul have recreated a multiple rocket launcher. We've basically got a rack of eight replica uh, Indian artillery rockets here um, using gunpowder engines same as the Indians would have done uh, up until the 18th 19th centuries. Straw bales equal to the width and depth of two war elephants have been set up 120 yards away. Using these sort of uh, old bamboo canes and the, the same sort of technology that they would have used, accuracy isn't exactly uh, uh, guaranteed. So uh, this is probably one of the reasons why they used quite so many rockets. Uh, batteries of eight or ten um, would commonly have been used. On this test, we, we've got the angle we think about right. So we're hoping that these ones should be fairly accurate. We're aiming for a fairly straight flight. How will the weapons system that ended the reign of the war elephant behave under test conditions? Seen here in 3D, the rocket's trajectories are wild and inaccurate, with no two missiles showing the same line of fire. But just as the ancient engineers must have found, testing the war elephant destroyer involves refining and endless retakes. We're going to do another test of a single rocket this time. Uh, we've picked one that's got quite a straight stick. We've lowered the angle about another five degrees, so we're going to have another go, see if we can actually get it to hit the target. Despite the team's recalculation of the angle the launcher should be set at, 
they're still finding it difficult to hit the target. Did the Indian rocket men know something that Ben and Paul have yet to find out? The texts that we have about these uh, Indian artillery rockets tell us that um, they were actually able to sort of hit targets with different diameter rockets um, and, and do calculations to work out what elevation. Having done all these tests today, if nothing else, it, it proves that they, they must have really known what they were doing because it's proven a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to actually hit a target, even from fairly close range. The team has now set the launcher at 12 degrees. They hope the straighter line from launch to target will give better results. While lowering the degree of the angle of fire has brought improved performance, three rockets having kept a lower trajectory, replicating the feats of the ancient Indian rocketeers is proving a very tough assignment. After firing more than 25 rockets, the team has decided to move the weapon system closer in to a range of 80 feet. Firing at closer range finally brings success. Well, we uh, finally managed to actually hit the target. Um, if nothing else, we've learned today that these rockets really probably were very, very inaccurate. And in terms of actually hitting a, a fix, let alone a moving target, it would have been very, very hard for them. If you're firing hundreds of them at a time, uh, it only takes one of them to go even near a horse or an elephant and the, the effect would have been devastating. At this close range, the terrified Indian soldiers would have had to wait until the elephants were almost upon them before firing. Just like today, tank battles then were fought with technology but won by the bravery of men. I think there are brief moments when the elephant is the tank of the ancient and medieval world, but they're very brief because the innovative thinking of people like Alexander the Great, the Mughal emperors like Akbar, they very quickly realize that they have to neutralize this advantage which the enemy has, and they do so.